I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing: I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now, just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. The working man is a sucker. Hey, everybody! Welcome to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host Ed McGowan here with my co-host Josh Cardo. What's up, buddy? How you hey. doing? Hey, yeah, what's up, dude? What's up? Oh, dude's muggy as fuck out there, dude. It's, uh, it's like soup, swampy times. Oops. My fucking nuts. Did you make any of those submarine jokes? <laughs> submarine jokes? Did I write any submarine jokes? I didn't write any submarine Me, jokes. You know, okay. I wanted to bring this up right out of the gate because. I understand that we're now in an era of stand-up where you're supposed to be a marketing expert, your own late-night show, your own monologue you're writing every single minute of the day so you can tell all your thousands of followers where you're going to be and what you do and your brand. So you're supposed to write about that kind of shit. But I didn't write about it because... I am not above talking about people dying, you know? Oh, sure. But it just didn't seem like worthy jokes to write. Well, this is my opinion on that stuff. Unless you're <clears throat> unless you're tweeting. I don't tweet. Do you tweet? Rarely. Like okay. Maybe twice a week. Eh, yeah. Probably three, four times a week. I just, it's just, I, I was like half-heartedly tweeting and now I don't. Just, I, I, I have more followers on there. Not that it I matters. They don't engage with me anyways. I, I might be the worst at social media for a guy that has a, a solid hour act. <laughs> I, might have a, <laughs> I might have the most lackluster social media following in history. I'm seeing people with 50,000 followers. They, they, have, they have five minutes. They got 10 minutes. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like everything I have is built towards what I thought I was supposed to be good at. Well, here's the thing. But so about like t- tweets like that, like that. I mean, that submarine joke, how much you, you could, that's good for like two days, three days, week and a half, maybe. I mean, yeah, you could do it on a club a spot lot. this week, maybe that's a lot next of week. If you're still talking about a submarine thing, it's like unless it's got, you know, unless you find something while you're writing it, that's like a greater, bigger thing that <clears throat> speaks to some truth about, you know what I mean? That lasts longer. Right. Yeah. Uh- um, you but know, I mean, it's a good muscle tweeting. I think it's a good muscle to stretch. I think writing in any aspect is healthy. The reason I why I brought it up is because I've been seeing, you know, all these different you know, anything that takes over the internet for four days. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bring up on the show, and especially when it's stand up related. You know, the whole community is talking about: is it okay to make a joke about dead people, even though they're millionaires and billionaires and whatever? Like, there was a lot of debate about that. Oh, and I read a lot of jokes too, so I heard a lot of. If anything sparks a debate or jokes, I want to know what it is, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think it really brought up for me a lot of the, I don't know, a lot of the things I'm lacking at in the scope of what you're supposed to, you know, quote unquote, have as far as a comedian goes and being uh-huh. successful and understanding what the internet is and what how to take advantage of a moment. Well, for example, say what exactly are you? What do you mean? What are you lacking? Oh, I don't. I definitely don't have the ticket sales, so that I guess equates to followership. I don't have the followers necessary to sell my own tour. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's the really the only thing, and I'm lacking some major credits. Like, I, a I, credits. I need that. Credits. Yeah, that's something I just the credits I, will definitely. I wasn't good enough to get them I when I was in, in my twenties. I don't know if tweets is really going to move tickets. No, 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 no. But, but you know what I mean. Credits, but, but reels, like people making reels based well, reels off of different. stuff. But, but reels I'm are talking not about yeah, overall. Yeah. Have you written any jokes or done anything funny? Regarding all those people perishing, <laughs> and I think when you when you read this, I just love the dude, like. Okay, we got six people died today. How many? What do we got? What do we got? Come on, come on! You're like I mean, punching I'm yourself like, in the mirror. Like, come on, Josh. come on! Dude, these six people didn't die in vain. I need to. I, My problem is I'm I so harsh. Sure. Like, it's a because when I read how they actually died, because at first I felt oh they so, blew up right. Well, here's what they what happened to them. So I. I got sad for a minute because I thought it was like they ran out of air. Yeah, totally. That's why that I was bum- like. that bummed me dude, out. That, was that such... bummed me out. Yeah. Especially the guy with his son. You know, that shit sucks, dude. Uh-huh. That's not a... Sure. Whatever. Yeah. You can afford to go do some cool shit. You did that. Dude, running out of There's air. A, no, you, that's awful. Bruh. But then I read that, okay, so here's what happens with something like that. The pressure is so insane that there is, you don't even know what happened. You yeah. turned to dust. Yeah. 
So there is no body to recover. Yeah. It's just dust in wow. the ocean. Yeah. You, you never existed. Yeah. Just poof. It's and kinda, that blew my fucking it's like mind. An obli- it's got like an oblivion kind of thing it to it. It really right? does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, you realize how... They just became like energy. It's unreal right. to me. Yeah, yeah right. and I went into a whole yeah, other yeah, place. Totally, and that's yeah, why I was yeah, like, yeah. man, that would be the joke I'd want to write. Yeah, right. <laughs> about motherfuckers turning like, to dude, dust. That's and like you think about all the ways to die to be able to like instantaneously disappear. Yeah, like only billionaires could die like that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet more billionaire. I bet if you and I, I wish we had the <laughs> Illuminati behind us to get that fucking trending. So some Elon Musk fucker obliviates himself. <laughs> I want to see a guy go to dust. That might be my new shit. Like I used to want to be stuffed. I want to be really? st- what like yeah. a taxidermy kind of thing. Yeah, and legit. And I would, I would allow the <laughs> poorest person in my family to have my body at their house for a year and pay. This is assuming I become famous and pay a fee to people to come in and you know take a selfie with me or with wow. my stuffed body. Dude, you are fucked up. That is the most. <laughs> I fucked figured up I could help him out. Dude, that is the most you keep fucked passing up me thing around. I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> now I think I want to be turned to dust. Like instantaneously turned to dust. Yeah. Yeah. How much could it cost you to get nuked like that? But so like what would you be wearing? I got to go back the to the tuxedo. Taxi- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a fucking vodka in one hand and a tuxedo on. My stuffed body. Did you, so did you get this idea when you were like at the wax museum or something like that? Did well, you go no. to Madame Trousseau and you're like, That's... I like taxidermy a lot. Do you? Yeah, I do. do and you I have, have any this- of it? Uh, no, because I have a kid and yeah, it's you know, I want him to get right with that. But I bought, Lauren had a <laughs> boss that really loved taxidermy and I was like, here, you should give him this gift because they were really good to our family for a year that she worked for him and gave us a lot of stuff, like just cool people. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to buy a gift because, you know, I benefited from some of the stuff that he gave. So sure. yeah. he, it was a mouse taking a shit like on this toilet. It was about... It was really cool looking. How did they? I don't know, but it was awesome. The mouse looked very real. Like it, it was real, but I don't know how they do it, but it looked very, it was a very good work. So I was like, before this show came out that Cameron Crowe did about roadies, there's an, Ron White's in it and his character gets stuffed at the end. He dies and they stuff him. But I had this idea of fucking before those guys. I'm just, <laughs> I love it. I want to make sure we say this on the podcast. <laughs> It's my favorite. This is my favorite Josh right here. Those motherfuckers, that was my fucking idea. It's my favorite. It's my favorite Josh. Son of fucking Ron fucking White. All of a sudden you got like a vendetta. No, it's, I'm just saying it was my idea, Cameron Crowe. You wrote that fucking show. And we're both from San Diego, so don't fuck me. Anyways, that's what I want to I want to be stuffed. But now that they've been turned to dust, that was one of the coolest shit yeah. I've ever read about. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty badass to get turned to dust. Dude, you just, like, just instantly, it's so, that pressure, that, like, because that's what I think about, like, when you die, like, your soul, right? Like, you you go from, like, matter yeah. to energy, right? Yeah. And they just instantly became... Because there's something weird about the association with you're dead and your body's around for a minute before they do whatever they're going to do with it. Yeah, right. There's there's a weird connection there where you think the person's around and their soul is what gone, they, but it's the minute you get shut down, your your energy. Well, so there's a is that what you're saying? Because that's what a, they mean by the dust. So there's a thing that I think is that very a, a live body weighs like. 21 grams, I think, is the number. I love you crack, guys. <laughs> less than a, Always grams. <laughs> Always in grams. Why are you weighing your cat in grams? How many grams do you weigh, Ed? 21 grams. Because it's the scientific. That's the, the scientific. My mistake. Though. Sorry. So that, uh, but yes, also how you weigh rocks and a weed. What uh, a coincidence. I mean, yeah. so, but, so, uh, Two but, of your biggest addictions. What a coincidence. <laughs> But the bot, like a dead body, weighs twenty one grams less than a live body. Wow, they they say. So that's the grams. soul, that's so apparently, apparently. If you believe in that that's, kind of thing, that's what they. Yeah, that's what the uh, have. There's theories, right? So, <laughs> so that like once all the, but you could also attribute that to. I wonder if they're fucking ashes. Weigh twenty one grams less. Like I know that all changes once you turn to ash. Well, once there's decomp- you have less ash. Well, once there's decomposition and whatnot, right? So yeah, so matter you change, right? Scientific, like, but there's the idea is that yeah, there's unaccounted uh, 
matter. Damn. It, between a live and a dead body. I love that shit. Yeah, it's so fucking cool. I know. Cool. I'm I know. such a stoner too. Oh, I dude. love that. Dude, I, I love was... how you're you have you probably have weed in you still. Oh dude. So you're a stoner I for still, life. Yeah, no, I still get off. Like, well, it's because I did um I did a bunch of like L S D. Yeah, yeah, that, like too. that and that kind of sticks around, like just that mentality. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just I went to the uh uh, the dead uh, thing at City Field the other day. Oh, really? Yeah, my buddies came up from... Uh, I didn't go in. I just went to the parking lot <laughs> for old times. <laughs> I just hung out in the parking lot. Would going in be hard for you? No. In recovery? Oh, you just were like, I'm not paying to go in. I'm like, eh. Hey. The parking lot's where it's I listened to the Spotify playlist on a ride home of a bunch of Grateful Dead songs. So I was like, this is enough. I got it. <laughs> I was like, this is good. Plus, you've seen them a bunch. I've enough, seen anyways. A, I've seen them a bunch, but I'm not... Like, that's not... The, I mean, it was always just a hang, really, to, sure. be, to be honest. like the, I mean, they're That's great. A great we got to get to that story one episode, the PCP-laced LSD or whatever that chick gave you outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, and then you told me that one story, too, where some guy in a bush. Yeah, that's... Did some, we got to get to those, two. Yeah, so okay. mark, we're marking them okay. in real yeah, time, yeah, yeah. so okay, cool. I don't fucking forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking about a job for today's episode. Oh, okay. And... I think my mind is in a very, uh, you know, shitty place. Oh, okay. So I found, I actually was really easy to find a shitty job. <laughs> so I forgot that I had had this job where uh, I was working for this student loan company, but they were like an independent. I forgot I had a job. Like you that. did? <laughs> well, I, and I had, and I am not a customer service person, phone person, and you had to talk to people about their loans. Now, yeah. I'm dyslexic. Uh-huh. I mix numbers up uh-huh. a lot. <laughs> so good. So I'm reading people's loans, and so- I'm just fucking them. I'm fucking them up. I'm just not good at the job. Somebody that owes like six grand, you're like, you owe $65,000. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I'm telling them, that I don't, I, yeah, I see, and I don't see anything. And they sat me next to this other idiot, and me and this dude would just talk about, he was a black dude, he was in the, uh, in the service, I remember one time I didn't I didn't know this, uh, but I was going through a really rough time. That's probably why I connected these two dots. But I was going through a really rough time, and I was openly talking about committing suicide in a comedic manner. But sure, yeah, yeah. it wasn't that. One yeah. day I came in, and it wasn't that. It wasn't that punchy. No, yeah, <laughs> I didn't right. punch it up. Put it that way. And this dude looked like he. We had to wear these headsets, and he put his headset down. And he was like, uh, "I'm just letting you know that." They require us when we're in the service to notify any, you know, an authority if someone's threatening to hurt themselves. And I looked at this dude and I was like, hey, do you remember that time where you left the phone on where you were openly talking shit about this girl's student loan? The father was on the phone and you're openly talking shit about him and I almost got the whole company shut down. And I'm like, now you're going to pull the official card on me, you're gonna go rat me out for my, that's all I could think about was how irresponsible this guy was in his real life and how dare he stand in the way of me killing myself. That's all I could think about. (laughs) Who are you to stand in the way of me taking my own life? Now, now you wanna be a serviceman? I feel like you still feel this way too. I I (laughs) fucking definitely feel this way. This guy is doing no work. I'm picking up the slack for him. We were friends though, so yeah, I didn't. I took friend. it from a good place because yeah. he was my buddy. Yeah. But I'm irritated today, so I found <laughs> the other place I could have took it from, and it's damn. Twelve years later, I'm irritated again. I it was a it was a tough time. He's letting you know though. Yeah, yeah. He's I like, know. bro, stop saying this shit to me. Well, no, he's like, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm getting I'm sick gonna, of you. I'm gonna get you some help. It's under the. I can't help himself. That was my point. This is why I love. This is my favorite part of like the the. You only see the the crazy angle. I I see your angle. He's like, listen, I'm telling that angle. I'm telling you, I have to go get you help. Like he's trying to help you, but he's doing it under the guise of like I have to. That was the problem. He threw the service at me. Uh huh. I don't care about the service. He should have just been more heartfelt. 
No, I don't care. I, just leave me alone. <laughs> just leave me alone. Just let me do my fucking <laughs> just thing. Just let me fucking Listen, take I'm, myself out. I'm fucking around. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I didn't really drink then. Because I oh, would yeah, have yeah, been. Yeah, yeah, it would have yeah. been over yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my yeah. drinking is the, the ultimate end all be all. Yeah. That's like, if I go to a bad place with that, it is it's a wrap, dude. Like, yeah, I well, will, alcohol like, can get you really sinky. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 it's not a good situation yeah. for me. But yeah, I was uh, thinking about that job. That was an awful job. I had a similar job. They we, fired me. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah Most go, people get fired for those jobs. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Those yeah. jobs, that's a awful job. Horrible job. People hate your guts. Dude, you're calling them at home. And they're like loser people trying to get loans for other loser people so which my, sucks because i'm a loser and i, I want to help them i was doing telemarketing telemarketing surveys which are like you would call somebody and you would ask them a survey about aluminum foil and it was like 90 questions dude it was like i don't think anybody it's like the game monopoly has anybody ever finished the game monopoly no i don't no one ever finished rap do you so know anyone like, that got was, through the 90 questions no, no. Okay. Not, nobody there Nobody ever like. I kind of want to do that job now, just to see if you can get. Yeah, just to see how far you can I mean, get. Think about this though: if you knew how to make money at that, and <laughs> now that we're older, you could be alone. No one could bother you if you make commission, and you could get someone to the fortieth question, and you made like imagine being able to get <laughs> someone to stay on the horn with you. Well, you couldn't do it now because of cell phones, but imagine. Just the, the like the the like the fire behind you of everybody's it's like, like bowling a three hundred, like, dude. He's eight, yeah, right. He's eighty questions. He's, he's got ten more questions. This dude's oh, gonna finish right there. Everybody's cube. like, yeah, go. go. <laughs> they got like the fucking thing running over to, off. Yeah, running in the break room. Yo, 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 yo. Josh is like, Josh just hit question eighty. What were the questions? Uh, on a, a scale of one to ten, how satisfied are you with your aluminum foil? When you use aluminum foil, would you rather use uh, saran wrap or a clear, right? So it was all about they like. They came up with 90 dude, questions dude, about aluminum foil. It was insane. It was insane uh, how it tears off. It was all like, fo it was wraps. So it was aluminum foil, saran wrap, the clear stuff. Most of them, uh, most of the questions had to do with when you pull off saran wrap, how it like sticks to itself. Yeah. It was pain. I got one for you. Give me it. The people that came up with those 90 questions, mm -hmm. all the individuals involved mm -hmm. that came up with 90 questions, mm -hmm. for them to be eligible, they have had to come up with one of those questions. Mm -hmm. Do you think those individuals have sex a lot, a little, or never? I mean, they're advertising strategy people. Yeah, but the analytics part, does that throw in the geek factor? Because now you're asking something scientific. Or are the questions more based on preference as opposed to data? That's how I can clarify this. Do Between I, who I think might be getting some pussy and who might not well, be getting Well, I'm trying pussy. to define who these people are that came up with these questions. Um, right. Because you think they're nerds, right? That's what you think of well, these Well, now people, when right? you brought up advertising... I was going off the quality of the questions you were asking, assuming they continue to get a little bit more, mm -hmm. I don't know, analytical. I mean, this this job was 30 years ago, so I don't really remember. I mean, you just popped of off it. three of those questions off yeah. the top of your noggin, so yeah. I assume you have some insight. You retain info pretty well. Right. But um, the, I, I feel like these are like focus group people. Okay. If you ever see like focus yes, group yes, people. Yes, yes, yes. I change I change I, I, I retract the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because I don't think it applies here. I think they get laid. Okay. Because they're like focus group people. They're like salesy. Okay. I don't think they're getting. Then you got to charm people into the like, hey guys, anytime you do a job it's where you like got to be like, hey, thanks for coming in. Yeah. You're able to talk someone into fucking you. Exactly. Exactly. Someone will that's, fuck you. That's who those people were. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In fact, they sold that whole thing probably got sold. Because it was probably 90 questions because they got paid more. Oh, yeah. You follow the money always, yeah, right? Right. They're getting the money. more. They're like, they're selling it. They're like, how you get more details. Because the other thing they do, and this was a big thing back then, is try and catch you in um, a lie, right? Like where they, they'll ask you the same question. Just interrogation. Differently. <clears throat> in a well, way. They're trying to make sure you're being truthful. Oh. Uh, so that they can validate. Well, it's interrogation. I guess so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was insane. It was an insane, and on the flip side, if you got the Audi one, if you got the Audi one, dude, it was like 10 questions. <laughs> 
you would just ask people about cars. I mean, see, I could get into cars. that too because yeah. Audis are so beautiful. It was awesome. It's always so much easier to push a product if you actually like what you're doing. Yeah, and it was easy. Like it felt like the normal amount of time you would take up from someone's home that you were just cold calling, as opposed to 25 to 30 minute aluminum foil survey. Like it was insane to imagine to somebody. I, I've never. It's was com like, almost comical. To keep somebody on the phone that it, long? That's comical. That's like a number you would see in some sketch. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 90 <laughs> about aluminum foil? I, mean, I got a couple of I got a couple of beefs about aluminum foil. I mean, if you called me, the ver if I was 42, Josh Accardo, uh -huh. in the 90s or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. And you called me about aluminum foil. The I would have serious. I would keep on phoning me for twenty minutes, beefing. You wouldn't get to ask one question. Uh, that's amazing. Because I am in. I'm in. If I had the twenty minutes to spare, that's the kind of shit. Just I know I would do. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I can't stand that the aluminum foil doesn't cover the pizza. Like I'm using this oh, right. the nine times out of, out of ten yeah, yeah. for pizza. Can uh, you make one? A pizza version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a pizza version of this uh -huh, shit. Because uh -huh. now I'm cutting my finger on the built-in razor blade. <laughs> I got beef. I got a lot of aluminum foil beef. I think they fucked that one up. I got a good Tupperware thing I use. Saran wrap too can go fuck itself. Yeah, saran wrap is a waste of fucking time. It's ridiculous. I mean, you ever try to stretch out a saran wrap because it's the last bit of it and you needed it just to wrap a little muffin and you're fucking with the thing and it's all wrinkly and next yeah. thing you know, it looks like your ball sack. It's yeah. all it's just gummy. It's like a little, little nut. Oh, yeah. that, oh, I've almost put my hand. I almost Joe Accardo. <laughs> that's my dad. I almost Joe Accardo a lot of walls over saran wrap. <laughs> You've been this, having a bad 10 years and you just want to end it over at Saran Wrap? This podcast is brought to you by <laughs> Saran Wrap. <laughs> Sponsor me, assholes. <laughs> Who's the person that makes Saran Wrap? Is they should make a Saran Wrap. General Mills? Is it General Mills? I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, They're probably General Some Mills. conglomerate yeah, that owns yeah. 50, like Johnson & Johnson. John, oh, it's Johnson. Uh, it's probably it's Johnson & Johnson. Johnson. Johnson yeah. So I, if they could make a Saran Wrap... That is so much easier to put on. I would love to. They be do. The guy it's for called that Tupperware, if I got dude. It's called Tupperware. Well, I'm, I'm just saying. I use the Tupperware. I would. Right. I love. What do you Tupperware. think of this? Now, do you microwave I use in plastic? The chef Tupperware just to fuck you up. Oh, that hard. The hard. Well, Tupperware? the little circulars, so you can stack them yeah. and write on them if you want. Oh, oh it's nice. beautiful. Do you? You put. It's, on I'm a, like the bear in there. You put away. <laughs> I can't cook shit either. <laughs> I just left. I'm a leftover king. Yeah, you just got like some French fries in it. You're Keeping like, it in order. A piece of tape. Open the like, fridge. It looks like a fries. Like, do you date per it? Per se's fridge. <laughs> just keeping notes, looking in there, telling my wife what's up. <laughs> yeah, you got about like, to spoil. Yeah, this French fries. Oh, dude, that's a hamburger. That's a half a hamburger. It's got that date on it. I guess it's Tuesday. We got to eat that. I gotta eat that. It's gonna go bad tomorrow. I gotta put it in a special. My wife keeps every fucking thing in there, man. I throw yeah. it all out. I'll eat it all. Oh, bro, dude, I'll I'm throw it all out. Leftover king. You I make shit out of the trash, though. We've already discussed this before. I've never eaten you anything eat out stuff of the trash beyond expiration, dude. I know how to. I know how to save food, bro. I know how to like. <laughs> I know how to make. I know how to make something out of nothing. Why are you eating? Tr it's trash. Like if that. Okay. Here's the general rule that I'm thinking of, and maybe you don't follow this rule. I, not even a maybe. I know you don't. But if <laughs> if another regular person, uh -huh. no one great, no mm -hmm. one bad, just a normal Joe, walks into your house, mm -hmm. goes into your fridge, and his instructions are go in there and throw out any food that could be dangerous for someone to eat. A lot of the food you still eat, the, the, a normal person throws out. That's what I'm allowed, saying. And you know what? They wouldn't be allowed back in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I caught somebody throwing out good food. Good food. That's a good. Uh, dude, God bless your wife. Oh. Well, I, I, that's an insane thing. To, dude, to, for you to hold grudges like that over food being thrown out. I know you're partly joking, but I know you're serious, I too. I am a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like your heart will it break. It drives me nuts to watch her like order like two tins of salad two plastic containers of salad and yeah. then they're getting thrown out oh no, i'm eating them i'm gonna eat them i'm not saying i'm against you eating the food i don't like to waste but i'm she doesn't it just doesn't get around i'm like yo we gotta eat this salad what's going on it's been in here for oh i'm okay, getting okay. to it so you're saying because i go through something similar mm -hmm. where i'm like i get yelled at and not just yelled at like i've almost gotten divorced over this my wife has an issue with food being eaten that's hers and she doesn't uh, eat very much 
Okay. So I guess her brother and her dad used to just stare. She eats a slow eater, and they uh-huh. would eventually eat her food. She has like a thing about it. Oh, okay. Which I'm totally respectful of. Sure. But it's taken me years to understand what the boundaries are of that because she can't really tell me when. It's only when I'm eating something, and well, I it's been there a day. But so I'm still going to eat it. Like so, I have to wait it out uh-huh. to where. You're right. Sometimes it gets to a point where she's had something sitting in there for three days, and now it's fucking dead. I can't eat it. You're saying you go it, something similar. But I eat it. But you eat it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And if you, anyone in this whole world ever wanted to know the difference between you and I, how we're so similar, those are the two sides of the coin. That's it right You're there. going through the same thing I'm going yep. through, except you except eat it. Except I eat it. <laughs> That's get, who we are. I'll get sick from it <laughs> and yell at her. I'm like, it's because you left it in there so long from the bathroom. I guess she's like, I'm in the bathroom. She's yelling at her about it. It's because you left that food in there. Well, you didn't have to eat it. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got, a good, uh, I got a good one for you today for the show. What do you got? <laughs> uh, La Jolla Comedy Store. Every now and again, for the guys they liked, the comedians they liked, this was 2005. Okay. They would, um, if they had a weekend headliner that was a you know fairly big name, they would let you open. They let you do 10 minutes. Like and, host or just? Uh, uh, they just... don't do hosts usually. And, so it's and like a... you, so just like kind of a handoff situation, okay, but it was gotcha. still a, a middle. Uh huh. So the opener would just do ten, and then bring up the middle, and the middle will bring up the headliner because mm-hmm. most of the time, uh, the headliner was from L.A. and would bring you know whoever their middle was. Gotcha. You know, if they had right, another yeah. guy from so like, from the top. comedy store in yeah, L.A. Yeah. that they wanted to bring, so there's like a pretty well known <laughs> headliner that came through, and uh, my buddy and I were doing we were about to move here. We were doing really well in that little circuit. So we got to, you know, open two sold out shows for this guy. And my buddy and I, it was so packed at the comedy store and they had a different configuration then. It was not as, um, like now they've remodeled the inside portion where the bathrooms are. So it's a lot easier to get to the bathrooms. But after a sold out show, it was like impossible to get through right. the showroom, yeah. you know, as a comedian to the green room. And we were just, you know, plus the green room, it's a famous guy in there, he doesn't know us. So it's not very comfortable for some like beginning comedian to sit in the green. Maybe it is. I mean, in this era, a lot of comedians feel like it's their they're entitled to be in the green room, which they are. Right. Uh, and I probably should have been in the green room. Right. But there's so many girls at this show because of the particular person mm-hmm. working. I don't want to say the guy's name because I don't mm-hmm. want to fuck this shit up. But uh, he brought this girl from this Playboy um, playmate, and my buddy. There used to be a corner where you could go outside the side door and it, you had to take a piss because the bathrooms were packed you could take a piss so my buddy used to use this as like his, his piss spot sure <laughs> so he's back there pissing and you can't really see him because the door's hiding him so he's pissing and he hears this guy come out and he hears him saying some crazy like just sex shit to this girl like they're just doing dirty oh, talk uh huh okay and they start making out and all kinds of shit <laughs> and he doesn't want to f- fuck it up he's like he just opened for this guy <laughs> and the dude ends up like the girl's wearing a tube top you know it's the early odds so tube tops are, are in uh-huh. and she takes her top down and i've seen her naked because of playboy but my buddy was like right there yeah, you're like in an alley he's like literally but yeah. he's behind this door <laughs> but he could see everything going on it's like literally right in front of his face oh. but they can't see him right uh, so he saw him up close and personal, and then they just started really going at it for. And I, when he got back, I'm like, "Where the fuck? Where have you been?" He's like, "Oh, so and so is sucking on that chick's tits for 20 minutes." It's <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck, man, uh, you're lucky. Damn, I should have took a piss. <laughs> That's so good. So, wait, so and, and now- it was such a cool night, even though it was not a cool night. Like now that night. I would hate it. I mean, you know, I'm old now, and I've, I'm a wor- I'm better than that guy, so I would definitely oh, hate it. Yeah, but yeah. then it was not about him as much as it was about the fucking the night, store, bro. The store, though, too, Damn, man. Like, just a, to open it yeah, up. I mean, I, I'm a store guy through yeah. and through. That's like, that was yeah. my home, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, everything about comedy that I love about it is because of the store in the beginning of my career. I bet, too. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. like one of the moments where, like, oh, I was too 
That was too funny, man. That's fucking great. I thought so I'd now, tell you. so did was the show? The show was over. So he, instead of going back to his hotel with this woman, well, no, no, no. It was the after the eight o'clock. Oh, so there so was about ten thirty coming oh, up. It was in between. It was oh, ten okay. coming up. God, I want. It was in between. This. I can't wait till after the podcast. Yeah, I'll tell, tell you who it was. It's, you're <laughs> not gonna be surprised. In fact, I probably just should have said his name, but like, I don't like talking out of school like that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. That's a uh, that's a good story. All right, I like that. Okay, cool. So uh, what do I got? I don't even know. I don't know what I got. I got. Uh, God damn it. Did we ever talk about the, the time I was in Atlanta and I did a show for two people? I you know what I wanted to know? 30 minutes for two people? No, but what I did oh, want to ask you, because I was thinking about this today too, nightmare. but I picked the other story. Has anybody tried to fight you? I had a guy approach me on stage. That's what I want to hear about. And I've had a lot of people, this is not surprising, I've had a lot of people try to fight me, but look at me and the way I act. Sometimes on stage I'm, or after? Well, not, fight is different. I've had a lot of people heckle me, like a lot of really aggressive dudes heckling me. Did anybody ever approach the stage, though? Uh, not close enough to make it real. I don't I'm not saying I look scary or threatening, but I definitely don't look like a guy that's not going to hit you. Right. Right. right so right, right. if sure, you sure. approach, you yeah, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to fight this guy then. So this guy approached me. I was at the pair. Um maybe 2019 and um i mean there was probably 20 people in the room and um he's drunk he's saying some stuff i'm kind of shutting him down i'm kind of i think i embarrassed him yeah and i'm asking you this just to give you context because you are a very happy persona on stage it's, right. I, it's oh, yeah. never like a yeah, yeah. i think i can especially early on before i could figure out how to harness it i'm a super disgruntled human so I could be really brutal, yeah, yeah. and if I don't know how to harness that when I'm on stage, it it can go sideways on me if yeah, I don't yeah. really stay connected to it. But you don't have that. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, you're I'm not, not gonna happier. go there. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. like a like a. But so this guy, I guess I said something to him, and yeah, exactly what you're saying. I'm not. I'm not that cutthroat where I'm just just yeah shit, yeah yeah, just, yeah you know shitting on a guy it's like his fucking home life or whatever like that but I said something and um he uh and I and now I'm going I'm in the middle of a bit and I probably have it on tape somewhere and I look over and now he's like as far away from me as uh, you are right now yeah and I'm like and he's oh so he pro oh he, so he, now he's standing you grab the there. mic stand. I had the mic, so I took the mic and I turned it over. I was just oh, like, you're gonna crack him with it? Oh, yeah, God, yeah. Mic, I'm just gonna destroy this mic against this guy's fucking side of his head, <laughs> and like, you know what I mean? I'm like, go ahead. Well, you got two more steps, bro, and I'm just. Oh yeah, I'm that's just why I always break. try to grab that mic stand because I'm gonna put that. But that, it's at the pair. That mic stand is a. I don't trust that. I, I, <laughs> you trust, you trust, I trust one of these. You know what I mean? That's why the pair's of mics always broken because <laughs> some heckler's getting drilled over the head with it. <laughs> But he wasn't, but the thing, and I slowly, because there was probably about like one, two, three, like three, four seconds yeah. of like, I'm going to have to beat this dude. And, and then I'm like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? And um, and then I see it in his eyes. He's trying to uh, correct. He's trying to like uh, apologize oh. kind of thing. Like he's trying to correct what he was. He's like, you don't under, you know, he just was he a, foreign. He was drunk. He was oh, hammered. Okay. He was hammered. So now he's standing there like, and he's like, no, you don't understand. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not okay. in danger yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But there was that for like four, four seconds. I was dude. like, dude, I'm going to have to beat this dude. And then uh, I was like, "You need to go sit down, dude." It's, yeah. And then it, it then it got a little bit like he didn't want to, and now I'm like, "You have, you know." And then it got. It took a while to get him to sit down. It kind of fucking ruined the rest of the set. <laughs> That's the problem. Is like now I can't do the show. I can't finish my set and oh, now it's ruined now. Yeah, no matter, I, I, I can't, can't talk, do any new jokes. I, I, I can't, can't do, do anything while jokes. he's still standing there. I can't do anything. Everybody's uncomfortable until he sits down. Plus, after that happens, unless I have the greatest comeback in history with that, or the greatest charming segue into the next bit, I'm. I mean, you could get a standing O from stuff like that, but I don't want it that way. I want. I want to do my jokes. Well, I don't want the other thing too. It was like towards the tail end of. I mean, you. Uh, there was, There's nothing you could. You it's like an eight minute yeah. spot. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> <laughs> that happened to like minute six, and then I'm got. You know, I don't yeah, really yeah, have that much time left. <laughs> yeah, by the time this is all resolved. 
Uh, and then it's just like, all right, well, yeah, have fun, guys. Uh, I hope, uh, yeah, he left. Okay, we're good. <laughs> you know, enjoy the rest of the night. Jeez, that's it. That's yeah, 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 yeah. It's not like in the middle of like a 20 minute That kind of shit always happens too when you haven't gotten up in a couple days. This is the only spot you have for another two days. It's a slow month. <laughs> yeah, I just got to run. And you know, like, you just, like, God, I just want to feel the stage again. Yeah. And you're really psyched to get up, and then you get up, and that happens. And you're like, well, fuck me. Yeah. I've been, uh, I've had a couple days off, but I've been like crazy work. Is, like I got that day job with the editing. I'm doing the sketches. I got the, the editing this. I'm like, oh, I'm man. like, but I'm burnt. So fucking crispy, dude. It's so, uh, it's so crazy. Like it. And it's like, it's these times where I'm like, I miss like waiting tables or <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm just, this is too much. <laughs> I just you wait tables. You're just like yeah. And I got I got I got me two hundred fifty dollars tonight. So let's, boring. Let's go do some day, drugs. Though. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're really saying. Yeah, that's really what I'm saying. <laughs> I have a feeling that. <laughs> I'm fucking just call off the grid. Yeah. It's crazy when you have a kid. You can't call off the grid. You just I'd like to jump off the grid for a while. Yeah, and right. And just go uh, yeah. away and not talk to anyone and just be alone. Ain't none of that shit happen anytime soon. I remember sitting in a comedy condo. Was it a comedy condo? No, but it was like a com, it was like a shitty. You know when they do the the truckers have to live in the shit like some. Tr- you know in the middle of nowhere they have these hotels where say there's a pipeline and people have to stay there to work. Oh, they have like a kitchenette and yeah, all yeah. that in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looked like a little apartment. I once had to do a five day gig somewhere i can't remember where it was and i sat no shit with the blind this is probably about 10 years ago with the blinds closed in the dark eating takeout for five days straight until the show and i'm not saying it was amazing but i would definitely want to do it again (laughs) if i had a chance i there was something so sad so Ooh, awful. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Too. And so <laughs> Henry Thoreau. Free about that. I don't know what it was. <laughs> it's like on what is it? On Golden Pond? You're just like in this golden fucking apartment complex on <laughs> that's yeah. who I would be. Yeah. And I don't even know now if I could I think I was hmm. Do you think you could be alone alone? Like if shit, God forbid, didn't work no, out in your marriage. No dog? No, 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 no. Let's see. That's another thing. I got the dog too. I love the dog so Dude, much. The dog, love bro. the kid too, and the dog. I'm, let's say, let's just keep it to spouses. Let's say shit doesn't work out with your wife. Could you be alone for the rest of the yes. go? Yes. That's how I feel. Yes. Totally. I'm not saying I prefer that. I'm saying if it ain't gonna work with her, then I'm alone the rest of the go. I stand by that right now. Yeah. Gina said that the other day. She goes, "If this doesn't work out, is we're I'm not. I can't. Do, I couldn't do this again." <laughs> and she said it out of the blue. <laughs> I was like, "What's going on?" I was like, "What? The, what? Huh?" We were walking the dog. She goes, "Yeah, this doesn't work out." You know, is it? <laughs> it implies that you have thought about it not working out. Yes. And not only that, but you've literally broken it down in every conceivable way that your brain could fa- like I was cling thinking, to. I was thinking, the- <laughs> how long have you been with Laura now? A lot of years. 13 years. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so we've been like... Yeah, Similar. Yeah, we're like 15. So um, I was thinking about this the other day. Uh, I, I don't know when this happened. This was years ago. But um, something happened where um, someone we knew came out as gay. Okay. And they were in a relationship, and the relationship ended. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but this is what I remember from it, is my reaction versus Gina's reaction. Because I was like, yeah, well, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, he found out, you know, he likes guys now. And Gina's like, yeah, no, that's not cool. (laughs) What's not cool? She's like, I'm like, wait, what are you saying? Yeah, I'm confused now. That's what I said. I was like, wait, are are you saying, like, if I came to this like this moment of truth and I was like I, I'm gay that you would be pissed off at me she goes yes <laughs> I, okay all right now in her defense I'm playing the other side of this yeah game. play it if my wife said to me 13 years into the mess <laughs> into the trenches into the shit that I realize I'm a lesbian 
I'm a little mad. Because you know. We, hey, plus, you're not bringing any girls home. Like, you're not pulling your end in this relationship. <laughs> I'm open to you. I, if I was gay, I would say, listen, I still... Yeah. I'll bring a dude around for yeah. us. We, I, I would mean, at least throw it out there. If if but you know you got some shit popping off if if you're ready to end a marriage or, or any relationship that's been around for a minute over the fact that you're definitely not going to be interested in pursuing that relationship anymore due to you being a whole different. I think that's sexual what, identity. I, I think that's what Gina was more uh, pissed off at. That I, mean, I understand that part. That, that it sense. would be ending. Right. Well, no, no, no. What I'm saying is that you had some inclination and I'm literally just hearing about this. I would feel blindsided if someone said to me, hey, I have you would bi, feel I have bi tendencies, but f I know for men in different cultures and up Sometimes until fairly is. recently, people have not been able to do that with their partners. So right. I understand right. both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just wait it out, and then it's like I was just like I was like the dick is too good, and I've, you're like I'm I felt sorry, like Gina was just like dude. you made the vows, you got to stick with them, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because she's so Italian. You agreed, like, yeah, you, listen, you agreed. Uh, you, you made a commitment. <laughs> I don't care what you got going hey, oh, on. Oh, I like I'll a guy your so yeah. like your guys. <laughs> you made a commitment. We stand tall here. That's what. It, that's what. That's totally what. We it's stand tall yeah, around here, pal. We stand up. This is a stand up family. Uh, so my dad wants to talk to you. Uh, oh, oh, okay. So uh, Gina's been telling us you got a little problem here, Ed. A couple dalliances with the male folk. Is this what we're hearing? Hey, Guess what, pal? Not a problem. Here's the. Here's what you're not going to embarrass do. my daughter. <laughs> here's what you're not going to do. <laughs> You're not going to leave my daughter. You're not going to leave my daughter. You're not going to embarrass my daughter. You're not going to be kissing your fucking boyfriend on social media, embarrassing the family. <laughs> that's, totally what, that's totally what it was. You be as gay as you want. You made a commitment here, Ed. It's a blood oath. <laughs> not the Navy. There's no retiring here, Ed. Your family now. <laughs> Tell death do you part. Doesn't say tell gay do you yeah, part. Those guys broke so many people in half, man. That feeling of I have two choices: death <laughs> or live a lie. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> happy Pride Month, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happy Pride, everyone. Uh, if you're brave enough to say it, good for you. Because that's real shit. People get. Italian dudes I know have been talked to like that that were gay. Oh, black dudes, I, uh, black dudes. Big I got black like buddies on a, on that have told me stories about thing, that yeah, shit. All that whole thing, Ooh, yeah, right. Boy, yeah, it's crazy. It is pride, man. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of baggage mm -hmm. you carry around when you're hiding that shit. Not living your true self. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And my true self is in a weird kitchenette room in the middle of nowhere in the dark with the blinds shut <laughs> and it's some much like this room some, we're in right now Chinese takeout and just as many like three different takeout joints nice all the I menus all the menus all just laid out laid out yeah. perfectly yeah like it's like a casino oh you I just have write, a routine to uh, get up and I would do this and that and make the bed I'm in the hotel making the bed even wow because I don't want the I don't want any of the maids in there Dude, see that's I'm not like, even doing drugs. I'm yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Weird. Like that's how I used to live insane. when I was doing drugs. Like we would we would all the blinds. I lived in a um I had a place and I had no curtains. So we used to hang we used to hang towels, tape towels to the ceiling so that the light wouldn't come in. So that see, we I could, could just, do that even though I'm not on crack. Yeah. I would don't want any light in mm -hmm. the room. And on top of that, it get got to a point where five days straight of that, by the third day when I'm outside, I wasn't feeling safe. I almost got a phobia Ooh. of the outside world. Wow. Like it, and then I just go on stage. <laughs> wow. <I leave. laughs> that's wild. Yeah. I like it too. I like the, the whole idea of like, but I could go for one of those right now. I blacking out a room and like you take all the clocks away. You never have to be accountable for how much time you've lost to crack. It's like in that movie that Don Cheadle does Earl Manigault, the famous. Uh, street ball legend Earl Manigault mm -hmm. the, they call him the goat uh, the Rucker in Harlem you know that basketball tournament oh okay it's like a famous it's been around for like 50 years anyways he had like a 50 inch vert him and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar went to high school at the same time he got hooked on heroin and they find him in the movie right uh huh 
he get he like literally ruins his whole life because of heroin and he disappears and they find him finally this is like act two the start of act two right. end of act one uh-huh. and they find him and they're like the mother goes to get him and he's like mama wow i could get back i'll get back in shape don't worry we, the nba is gonna call it had been a year since he's played basketball organized basketball he had been just getting high that whole he had lost a year so when you talk about taking the clocks off the wall, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all I can think about is, totally. you know, that dude being so yeah. fucking heroined out. Yeah, it's a good year. <laughs> <laughs> this guy thinks he's going to go back to the NBA. You know, you're not, you don't want to go back to the TGIF. He thinks he's going back to the chances of, of your. Well, that's the thing is like, you don't really think that much time has passed. Well, that's what that was that's fascinating so that cool you said it. that. Yeah. That I didn't know that was an active thing that you would, people would take the clocks you off would hide, the wall. Turn all the clocks around. Yeah, I don't know what time. That was like a know. normal thing then, right? I don't want to know what time it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Damn, I, I just want to know. I, the only clock that matters, the only, the only is like it's, and it's a, like one of those sand timers, but it's just rocks. <laughs> yeah, it's just drugs pouring through. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh make sure you're following us on all the places you should be following us uh check out josh uh ed and i are going to be in seattle july 26th to the 31st you can buy your tickets now i have those links up uh make sure you're liking and sharing all the reels we put out because that would be amazing and so helpful to a new show ed what do you got uh just follow me on edmcgowancomedy.com or no edmcgowan uh comedy on uh instagram i don't have, even have <laughs> a website <laughs> i gotta get a website <laughs> all right that's our show thanks guys later you can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every wednesday at 12 p.m eastern standard time you can follow us on instagram at working class holes also make sure you watch the full show on youtube All you got to do is type in working class holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.